Jim, I want to get your thoughts on Germany repatriating its gold. Uh, the news came out that you know it got its gold back from Paris, from New York. Now, mainstream media was quick to point out, hey, this happened three years ahead of schedule. Right. So while some applauded it, it raised some red flags for you. Why? Well, this is a very complicated story. But as you know, in 2013, the Deutsche Bundesbank, the Central Bank of Germany, notified the Federal Reserve and also the Bank of England and the, the Bank of Paris, uh, Bank of France, that they wanted their gold back. Some of their gold, not all of the gold. Germany still has gold in New York, and they still have some right. gold in London. A little they, over a thousand tons. Right, right. They did get all the gold back from Paris, so they left some of the gold, but they wanted it back. And the Fed said, "Well, it's going to take you know seven years to get you all the gold back." And everyone said, "Well, aha, this proves the Fed doesn't have gold," <laughs> right. which is nonsense. They do have the gold. Could be leased. Uh, the physical gold is there. It could be leased out. You might have had to wait until the leases run off before you could ship it back. That's a separate issue. But uh, but here's the point. Uh, Germany doesn't want all the gold back. They, they did this for political reasons, and, and this is why it was done, finished early. 2013 was an election year for Merkel. 2017 is an election year for Merkel. There's a very small, they have a parliamentary system, there's a very small minority party. It's kind of a nationalist Trump-style party, and they're banging the drum about getting the gold back. So they, they put in the original notice to appease that party. Merkel wins the 2013 election. They finished the deliveries in 2017. You know, the, the election is September 24th. It's not a coincidence that they finished the delivery one month ahead of the election because this boosts her standing with this little party. So there's a political motivation behind that. So A, and the other reason they don't want all the gold is because there's no gold leasing market in Frankfurt. Nobody wants to do deals under German law. There's no well-developed leasing market in Frankfurt. So they didn't want all the gold to, in the first place because they wanted some floating supply in New York and London to run leasing operations to, to run the gold manipulation, number one. Number two, the timing is explained by the political dynamics inside Germany. So there's a lot of backstories here. Okay, so if Frankfurt cannot lease the gold out, if it's just right. sitting in the vault, isn't right. this price positive for gold? Absolutely, because to run the manipulation scheme, it, it's sort of 100 to 1 paper to physical, but you need some physical. Think of it as an inverted pyramid. You've got all this paper gold, COMEX futures, and unallocated you know, London Bullion Market Association forward contracts and ETFs and all this paper gold on a little bit of physical gold, but you do need some physical. When you take, that's the floating supply, when you take a little bit of that physical out and, and take it out of the floating supply where it's not available to support financial transactions, the pyramid gets more unstable and the likelihood of a price spike goes up. Uh, we're also saying this was in Switzerland recently and I met with some of the private vaults and they said gold is moving from the banks, so UBS, Credit Suisse, Deutsche Bank, and others, to private vaults like Loomis and, and Brinks and, and others. So, but, but the difference there, people say, well, what's the, what's the big deal? You take a, you know, a, a bar of gold, you move it from this vault to this vault, what's the difference? The answer is this, when you take it out, this reduces the floating supply. And when it goes into Brinks, it's not available for So reason. this is why they dragged it out over the course of these years? Because many people said, you know, it's not, it wasn't that much gold. Why couldn't it be moved faster? Well, physically, it could have been moved in a matter of days. Logistically, there was no impediment to that. But legally, and this is really the issue, as I said, they didn't want to disrupt the gold leasing market. If the New York gold is leased out, you've got to wait till the leases run out before you can ship it. Okay, so while all this is happening and this news is breaking, Steve Mnuchin pays a visit to Fort Knox right. saying, look, all the gold is there, $200 billion worth of it. Right. Was it business as usual? Now, this is only the third time in history that a Treasury Secretary visits Fort Knox. Co correct. Was it standard for you or weird? When I saw this, this was totally weird. I was shocked. I was shocked for a number of reasons, Dana. Number one, first of all, it is rare. Only the third time that a Treasury Secretary has ever visited Fort Knox since 1937. Uh, so that's been a long time. Secondly, he, he took Senator McConnell with him and some aides. So it was kind of an official visit. Um, and there hasn't been an official visit to Fort Knox since 1973. Now, obviously, there, there's the Army troops and others guarding it, the people there all the time. But for an official, you know, sort of Washington visit, it's been since 1973. It was at 40, uh, 44 years or whatever. So this is extremely rare, number one. The other thing that's unusual about it, the, the, what I call the monetary elite, so Treasury secretaries, finance ministers, central bankers, they don't want to pay any attention to gold. Remember when a few years ago when Bernanke did yeah. that lecture at Georgetown, or maybe George Washington University, and one of the students said, you know, Mr. Chairman, yes. you know, what about gold? He goes, oh, it's just a tradition. He, he got away from that question as fast as he could. The reason is the minute you pay attention to gold as a monetary asset, you're enhancing the value of gold as a monetary asset. You're putting a floor under the price. They don't want people to think about gold. They don't want to pay any attention to it. So that was unusual. Then, I mean, then, he tweeted then the question it out. is, why did right. he do it? Right. And he tweeted it out, right. put a photo with the gold bar. Yeah. So, I mean, I've, I've been involved. It's kind of, you know, I'm, I'm a serious 
investor and analyst of gold, but it's kind of fun so to what hold do you, those So what do you think is behind it then? Well, one of the things, uh, look, one, one, one version was he wanted to see the eclipse and it was an excuse to fly the government jet to Kentucky because it was in the, uh, the totality of the eclipse. But there's something else going on, which is we're coming up against a debt ceiling and a budget uh, train wreck. The, the U.S. budget ends on September 30th, but that's a Saturday this year, so really September 29th is kind of D-Day for the budget. The Treasury is running out of cash. They're literally running out of cash. So you've got to do two, and these are separate issues. People kind of mush them together, but they're separate. You've got to raise the debt ceiling so the Treasury can borrow more money, and you've got to approve at least a continuing resolution or else you're going to shut down the government. Imagine if you don't do either. You shut down the government. Oh, by the way, the Treasury can't pay its bills. But the Treasury has a trick up its sleeve. It's been done before, which is the following. The gold on the books of the Treasury is officially valued at $42.22 per ounce. Now, everyone knows that's not the price, but that was the price back in 1973 when they first did this. You could mark it to market just the way a hedge fund does. So the Treasury could take right. the gold and say, okay, we're now going to mark it to 1300 right. or any number you want. And that difference between $42 an ounce and 1300 an ounce, the tr all the Treasury has to do is send a certificate. This is under the... Uh, uh, the Gold Act of 1934, all they have to do is send a certificate to the Fed and the Fed has to give them the money in the Treasury's bank account. So the Treasury could pull $350 billion out of thin air just by remarking well, the gold. If without that were raising, to happen, what would that do to the price of gold? Well, it, it, at, at a minimum, it's, you would say, well, wait a second, the Treasury's treating gold like money. Maybe I better right. think about what it means to be money. If you, the minute you do that, you get to $10,000 gold because that would be that would be what the price of gold would have to be to support the existing money supply, uh, basically uh, uh, M1. If you had 40% backing of M1 today with the amount of gold, the price would be $10,000 an ounce. It's not mystical, it's, it's eighth grade math. Um, but it would be paying way too much respect to gold. I'm not, I'm not saying this is going to happen. I'm saying it could happen. It's one of the tricks they have, have up their sleeve. But they could pull $350 billion out of thin air without raising the debt, without increasing the debt at all, just by marking the gold to market. So maybe you want wanted to go and make sure the gold was there uh, first. Jim Rickard, so much weirdness, so little time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining Thank us. Thank you.